What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Chig coming at you with a, well, pretty decent gold farm. So today I'm going to be showing you how to farm gold using your level 40 rogue in auction house greens as long as your spec is correct. So before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you get notified every time I come out with a new video. Anyway, let's hop right into it. So I am in Scarlet Monastery. I am in Graveyard. You do this in Graveyard and in Library. So Graveyard's a little easier, Library's a little more difficult. I'll explain why. So what we are going to be doing is getting guaranteed chest spawns. Make sure your lock picking is high enough level that you will be able to unlock the large iron bound chests and you will be getting some solid chests. You'll be getting large iron bound chests but you will be getting chest galore. So the reason we do both graveyard and library is because if you do just graveyard, you're going to get locked out because it only takes about four and a half minutes to do the whole run. Um, so something you can do in here, you can do the run, you can check and see if iron spines up. If you don't have your ring yet, you can check and see if the other rare spawns are up, but let's hop right into the spec first. So we are doing all the way combat. And the reason we're doing all the way combat is because these pulls require you to kill several elites at a time. So we can do that, but we have to do it a very specific way. So how I have this set up, we're using lightning reflexes to get 5% dodge chance. We're using improved backstab because it's going to make our mutilate have 30% increased crit chance. We're doing deflection, 5% more parry. We're doing precision. Chance hit with melee weapons increased by 5%. This is just to get dual wield specialization. These mobs are all lower level than us, so we don't need the extra hit, but we do want dual wield specialization. We have two points in endurance because we want our evasion and our sprint to have lower cooldowns. One point in repost. What I would recommend doing, making this macro right here, that makes your mutilate cast all of these things. So if you are... Um, making an assassination rogue this uses cold blood before you use mutilate if you are playing a combat rogue and you have repost in your build this uses repost before mutilate and then if you have neither of those it just casts mutilate so start your attack and cast mutilate and does those things so we have one point in dagger specialization just because we need it to move down the tree we have five points in dual wield specialization because it increases the damage done by our offhand. It's going to make our mutilates hit a lot harder. Blade Flurry, we are using this in most of our pools, so I will show you how the pools work. Uh, weapon Expertise, Sword Fist and Dagger Weapons by five. This is literally just making your auto attacks deal more damage. And then Adrenaline Rush. We only really use Adrenaline Rush for one of these pools because other than that, it's not going to be up. So what you're going to do in Graveyard, I don't pickpocket the mobs because they drop battered junk boxes. They don't drop worn junk boxes, so they're not as good. But you can, if you like, go ahead and do that. So we're going to come in here. There's a patrol that comes around, and he comes up to right here, and then he turns around and walks away. So this chest right here is always here. Sometimes it's a locked chest. Sometimes it isn't. So what you'll do, you'll see which of the mobs are up here. So we have two torturers and two scryers. We know we want to kill the scryers first. Before we hop into this though, I want to show you what runes I'm using. I am using Mutilate. I am using Blade Dance. So we're going to be casting Mutilate. We're going to be using Blade Dance. Always have Blade Dance up. So it's just giving us 10% more parry chance. We're getting parry haste. It's working, helping us out a lot. So you can do two things for your chest rune. On your chest rune, you can put just a flesh wound, take 20% reduced physical damage while Blade Dance is active, yada, yada, yada. Or what I do is Deadly Brew. The reason I do Deadly Brew is just to drop the mobs faster, stack up the poison. If they're about to fall over, you can switch, uh, you can switch over. I make sure at all times when I'm doing this farm, I have double crippling poison on. The reason being, it's going to give us the poison for making mutilate deal more damage and it is also going to slow the mobs so when they run away and they're trying to get to you know the next pack of mobs to bring them back over to make it harder on you they're not going to be able to so what you're going to do is before you pull you're going to pop evasion and then you're going to pop blade flurry 
because you want to be blade flaring the whole time you're fighting more than one mob. You want to be able to mop them down. Then you're going to get four combo points. After you get four combo points, you're going to pop blade dance, and then you're going to alternate between blade dance and slice and dice because we are trying to get as many attacks in to our adrenaline rush window as possible. So we are going to go ahead and evasion. We're going to go ahead and blade flurry. We're going to get four combo points. We are going to pop our blade dance. And then we're going to get two combo points. We are going to go ahead and pop our slice and dice. Now, you could interrupt him, but why would you? Because he's in the middle of casting. He can't run if he's casting. As you can see, as my um, things are up here, I don't have to worry about it. It's just dropping the mobs. All right, so he's about to start running, right? I let my blade dance fall off. We put it back up. All right, keep slicing dice up. So... You noticed I was kind of trying to talk while I was playing there and I didn't pop adrenaline rush very early at all so make sure you use your adrenaline rush as soon as you can they're about to run away you can stun them so there you go easy easy um, we're using the uh, rolling with the punches on our boots you don't have to you can it doesn't really matter um, so here's what we got we got a moonstone from looting the mobs out of the chest. We got a we got two mana potions, so those are going to sell. We got a hammer of the monkey. That's going to sell because that's good stats. And we got a jade. All right, so some of these things you're going to wind up vendoring. Some of them you're not. But, you know, you get bags. You get all kinds of things out of here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go find the second chest. I'm going to show you where it spawns. And obviously, like I said, you can pick their pockets, but... They do drop the battered junk box. Let me get one. Or try to get one. All right, battered junk box. So that's the baby junk box, right? So there is some decent stuff that can still be in there, but it's not going to be the best thing in the world, right? So we're going over here. This box can spawn in four places out here, and then it can spawn in the crypt. So first thing you want to do, you want to check over here. This is where mine spawned. So here here on the other side same two spots here here and then it can spawn in the crypt right so you can make a macro that targets iron spine come in walk up to about here if you don't target iron spine he's not in here yes you can solo iron spine without many problems trust me it's not a problem so you're gonna go over here you only have the haunting phantasm what mobs over here changes so just don't get used to this being phantasm you're gonna pop that you're going to get four combo points. You're going to pop your blade dance. You're going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn down the volume of my game because it's too loud. You're going to get slice and dice going. So he's going to summon a regular phantasm. Go ahead and just auto dig it down. Dive in one hit. Switch back over. Tank him down. Make sure you're paying attention to your blade dance. Go ahead and keep it up. Switch targets. Bonk. Go back to this guy. Take him down easy right you're gonna open this chest so what drops in these chests always random so who knows all right so we got some male combat boots so strength stamina we know strength stamina is a good combination we got some sweet nectar sometimes you're going to get things that you're going to vendor sometimes you're going to get things that you're going to sell in the auction house sometimes you're going to be frustrated not getting anything sometimes you're going to get blue sometimes you're going to get white sometimes you're going to get the Supply crates, you're just going to get all kinds of different things. That's part of the fun of this farm is that it is RNG. So we are going to stealth our way back out of here. If you want, this is not something I do, but you can take out Interrogator Basash because he does have a really high chance to drop the dagger. The dagger vendors for like 50 silver. It's just one more thing you can get, right? I don't because it's not worth the bag slot. I go through here. I do all of this. So not a big deal, right? So one of the big things for me, after you're out of range, go ahead and pop out a comp or go ahead and pop out a stealth because we don't have the improved speed. Gonna run through here, gonna grab, you know, just pop out, run across the hallway, run into library. So the thing with library is you can just do this farm in library and 
use it as not only a pickpocketing farm, but as a chess farm as well. So in library, they drop the uh, next uh, lockbox up, which is called a worn lockbox, right? So there we go, worn junk box. So we're going to get that. Um, that can contain useful things for us. It can contain our materials that we need to craft our poisons. It can contain blinding powder. It can contain things to save us money in the long run. It can contain greens. It can contain gems. Basically anything that you could possibly want can be in there. Um, also, you're going to be pickpocketing food, so you can use your food. You don't have to use money on food. There's a lot of things you can do from the stuff you're pickpocketing in here. So when you come in here, I would recommend doing a pickpocket loop. You don't have to pickpocket everybody because, like I said, we're in here just trying to get the boxes. The thing with the boxes in here is they are harder to get in here because these mobs are higher level. They're more... Um, stacked up you got to pay more attention to where things are um, sometimes you might have to vanish in here you have a little more room for mistakes in the other one you don't really have a lot of room for mistakes in here so this chest come in here you see which which mobs are up so you've got an adept you've got an adept and you've got a gallant so you need to know what the mobs do the adepts and the gallants do different things so the adepts the caster the gallant is a paladin type mob so he's going to have a stun he's going to make it harder on you so the reason i'm just going on over here is because that scarlet diviner was walking towards where i was going to be and i know that i do not want to pull those mobs with the diviner because that will make it harder when he patrols over there as well as if they run it's going to make it even harder so one of the things here, greater healing potions. These are amazing. They're easy to sell. They are useful. We use them all the time. So just coming in here to pickpocket for the greater healing potions and the worn junk boxes, I'm sorry, is worth it by itself in my opinion because you can make money just from the healing potions. You can make money just from the lock boxes. You can make money just from all of that, getting the boxes is just going to be a little bit of a bonus so when you're going through the hallways here you can pickpocket the mobs pickpocket the mobs so if you get seen just automatically vanish it's not that big a deal when we get over here all right so this is our first box spawn that's not the one in the room so we just saw that there's a pack going that way right so we want to be careful when we're doing this so we can what i normally do on these to make sure that i don't pull anything extra is I will sap one and then I will fight the other one in the corner. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sap the monk. Actually, no, on these, you can sap them, but on these two, I think since the diviner is going to be the squishy one, I'm just going to open up on the diviner and then pop my blade dance. So let's see how that works. So we did that. Get your dodge up. All right, so with these guys, you do not want to let them run because things are close by, right? So he's casting, so I can let him cast. I can let him cast. I can let him cast. So he's about to run. So I'm going to go ahead and pop stun on him. That way I can take him out before he runs away. Bang. All right. So now we're going to finish him off. Make sure you're keeping your blade dance up. All right. So he might run too. So what we're going to do here is we are going to pull energy. So if he does start to run, we can just dunk him down real quick. All right. So there we go. We are safe. Go ahead and pop a band-aid just in case. You're going to get a lot of silk in here, so you'll have all the band-aids in the world. So she pats over here. Go ahead and stealth. Wait on her to pat past. Got to pay attention to the patrols when you're in here because they will take you out. And it is not fun to die to a patrol. So as long as you're paying attention, what I normally do when I walk through here is I will mark the pats. That way I don't have to worry about it. So... This is one of the spawns in here. So we got a Hillborn Axe and the Monkey. We know the Monkey sells really good, so that's gonna be a little bit of gold. So you go on up through here. I'll show you the other places where the boxes spawn. So you're gonna get two boxes in each dungeon, right? So you can turn around and walk out once you get two boxes. Very, very rarely there will be three boxes in here because there's that one in that room that's always there, and then they can spawn in these rooms. So you can come up to here, it will be here, it will be here, it will be here, or it will be here. 
I don't know if we can take out the boss by ourselves. I've never tried. It might be cool to try. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to make my way back over to the other box. I'm going to pick it up. And then that's it. That's your run. Um, if you just have a couple minutes, just do graveyard a couple of times, get locked out, and then head out. If you have enough time and you actually want to sit down and you want to grind out some money, you can do this, do both, get both of your boxes in both dungeons, and then reset because it's going to take you a little bit longer than the reset timer. So it is going to be worth doing. And as you can see, we got several boxes. We got several gems from pickpocketing. We got several lots of things. All right, so now we can see that the patrol is patrolling away from where we're going. So when we go in here and we fight these other mobs, we should be fine, right? So, something to take into consideration. When I am starting this pool, my evasion is down. So, if I have to vanish, I'm going to vanish. But, I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to wait until my energy is about to tick. Sap. Do this. Then I'm going to Blade Flurry. Then I'm going to Blade Dance. Alright. So, get my parry up. He's healing. We're going to interrupt the heal. All right, so if he starts to run, we're going to stun him. All right, we stunned him. Okay. Now, this guy's almost down. We still have our cooldowns up. All right, cool. We're going to let our energy regen. Once we're back close to full energy and it's about to tick, bang. Holy smite, we don't care about. Fine. We just want to interrupt the heal. Same thing. We want to make sure we have energy to stun him if he runs. So, Holy Smite, we don't care about. That's not a heal. So, he's healing. Gonna kick the heal. Auto attack, auto attack, auto attack. Alright, he's going down. So, I got the pat. So, I'm gonna line sight the pat. Make the pat come in here. And then, kick the fireball to get it to come over to me. Alright, now we're gonna do the same thing. Alright. Keep up our parry. Not gonna worry about the fireball. We're going to hold our mana until we have to, or our energy rather. All right, going to drop it, going to drop it. All right, so he's probably going to run after that fireball. So we'll stun him after he takes off running. There we go. Dropped in. Easy, right? Easy, easy, easy. So now you open your box, you take your spoils, and you're done. So in just one run, we got three and more than half of a thing of loot here we got some grays that sell good we got some silk we got some potions we got several potions um we got some boxes that we're gonna open so let's go ahead and open the boxes and see what we get but look how many greens we got from this got a jade got a citrine got two moonstones and we got whatever that is we got some potions all right so here's what we're gonna do we are going to open our boxes, and then that's going to be the end of the video. So if you want to stick around and see what we get in the boxes, feel free. If not, I will catch you guys in the next one. So let's see what we get. So first box. Small pocket watch, 94 copper. So a couple silvers. Nothing wrong with that. Flash powder. Bang. There you go. We use flash powder like crazy, so getting it for free. More flash powder, getting it for free. That one had over a silver in it. Deathweed. Alright. There you go. That's something you can sell. It's one of our rogue materials. So let's open these last boxes and see what we get. Blinding powder. Blinding powder you can sell in the auction house because you have to craft that from Fade Leaf, right? So there you go. And then we got a carved ivory bone. That's three silver. So we got... Two gold worth of deathweed. We got three silver in that. And we got a handful of flash powder, which we're going to be using later anyway. We got a bunch of greens. We got a bunch of things to vendor. You're going to turn your silk cloth into band-aids because band-aids vendor for more. Uh, we got some tin ore that we're going to be able to sell in the auction house. We got some fade leaf that we're going to be able to sell in the auction house. We got some mana potions that we're going to be able to sell in the auction house. Heavy letter will sell in the auction house. Steel bloom will sell in the auction house. Are you picking up the the um the pattern here you get a lot of things you can sell so like you can make a 
pretty decent amount of gold. I'd say, you know, anywhere from 60 to a little over 100 gold an hour, depending on how lucky you get with some of your drops. So what I do is I set my hearthstone for Gallows End and I just run this until my bag's full. I will go to Gallows End. So also when you're coming back through here, if you pickpocketed things, you may, if it takes you long enough, be able to pickpocket things on the way back out. Now, obviously all the things I pickpocketed aren't going to have their pockets reset, but you will be able to pick some of the pockets of the ones that are at the beginning of the dungeon. All right, so I got seen. I'm just going to run. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I'm going to use... Well, don't even have to use my vanishing powder. Made it out safe. See? There you go. Anyway, how you can use being a rogue to your advantage to make money without really having to think. That's what we got here. Well, I appreciate you guys hanging out. I will see you guys in the next one. Appreciate you.